Today I'm going to show you how to make a superfood that'll last you a lifetime without refrigeration and that's so nutritious you won't need to stockpile any other foods. This food was widely used by the natives of North America and Western explorers who were on their own for months at a time. It was light, compact, high in protein, carbohydrates, and vitamins. In fact, if you have it, you don't need anything else because a person could subsist entirely on this food drawing on the fat for energy, the protein for strength, and the vitamins for health. But before taking you by the hand and showing you this lost skill that even a 12-year-old can master following this video tutorial, I'd like to unearth a long, forgotten secret that helped our ancestors survive famines, wars, economic crises, diseases, droughts, and anything else life threw at them. A secret that will help you do the same for your loved ones when America crumbles into the ground. Because the crisis that is about to hit America is what folks 150 years ago called daily life. No electrical power, no refrigerators, no internet, no computers, no TV, no hyperactive law enforcement, and no Safeway or Walmart. I'm going to share with you the three lost pioneer lessons that will ensure your children will be fed when others are rummaging through garbage bins. In fact, these three old teachings will improve your life immediately after you hear them. My name is Claude Davis, and I live with my wife and two children in a log cabin I built myself. It's not exactly the five-star hotel that most Americans dream of, but for me, it's the five-billion-star home that I've always wanted. We grow our own food, and I get to raise my kids close to nature. We've been completely off the grid since we've been producing our own electricity for two years now, but we can do just fine without it in case we ever have to. I built a small root cellar where we keep our homemade canned foods, and with the help of God, we like to think that we're ready for whatever's going to happen in this country. But even though things are good now, that wasn't always the case. My story is emotionally heavy with struggles and disappointments, but also with a faith in God, and a strong will to survive that finally led to my being here. So pay close attention, because this video will change your life for the good. Lesson number one, don't take anything for granted. My grandparents from my father's side came to America from Ukraine just before the Second World War and started a small farm in Texas where I grew up without missing a thing. But my grandfather wasn't so lucky. When he was only 12 and still in Ukraine, he survived one of the most horrific famines. Of the hundred families that lived on his street, only 20 survived. So what you're about to hear is a real recollection, as it was written in a personal journal just after the crisis by one of his neighbors. Where did all the bread disappear? I do not really know. Maybe they've taken it all abroad. The authorities have confiscated it, removed it from the villages, loaded grain into the railway coaches, and took it away someplace. They've searched the houses and taken away everything, to the smallest thing. All the vegetable gardens, all the cellars were raked out, and everything was taken away. It was so dreadful that every day became engraved in my memory. People were lying everywhere as dead flies. The stench was awful. Many of our neighbors and acquaintances from our street died. We tried to survive the best we could. We collected grass, goosefoot, burdocks, rotten potatoes, and made pancakes, soups from putrid beans or nettles, collected glay from the trees and ate it, ate sparrows, pigeons, cats, and dogs. When there were still cattle, it was eaten first, then the domestic animals. Some were eating their own children. I would never be able to eat my child. One of our neighbors came home when her husband, suffering from severe starvation, ate their own baby daughter. This woman went crazy. Another neighbor wrote a petition to the authorities, and here's just a paragraph from that. said, Please return the grain that you've confiscated from me. If you don't return it, I'll die. I'm 78 years old and I'm incapable of searching for food for myself. And of course, nobody cared. In a crisis, it's everyone for himself. Although in many cases, families did still remain families. But just after the winter, when there's absolutely nothing to eat, my grandfather, together with his mother, went to the nearest town where the government had established a soup kitchen. Unfortunately, the 25-mile journey was too much for his mother. 
After just five miles, she couldn't walk anymore. My grandfather noted in his journal, Mother said, save yourself, run to town. I turned back twice. I could not bear to leave my mother, but she begged and cried, and I finally went for good. Now, I don't know about you guys. I'm a father myself, and when I read these things, I burst into tears. Now, please allow me to take a wild guess here, without getting mad at me. Your life's not perfect, but at least you have a computer or a mobile device to watch this video on. Your fridge is probably half full, and while you have your problems, starvation is not one of them. And even though your job or retirement could be more enjoyable, you probably have enough money to at least get by. And that's great, but make no mistake taking this for granted. History has shown us many times that it can all fly away in a split second. The biggest misstep that you can take now is to think that this can never happen in America or to you. All that my grandfather and our ancestors who came here and formed America lived through would be in vain without lesson number two. Those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. Now call me old-fashioned, I don't care, but I completely believe in America and what our ancestors stood for. They all had a part in turning this land into one of the most powerful countries in the world. Many died and suffered before a creative mind found an ingenious solution to, maybe, a century-long problem. Now, believe it or not, our ancestors' skills are all covered in American blood. And this is why these must be fought for, protected, and handed on for them to do the same for our children and our children's children. But now, my friends, we're sitting on the edge of oblivion. Our fathers and grandfathers were probably the last generation to practice basic things like building a root cellar or making pemmican. Our ancestors laid the bricks and built the world's strongest foundation that we're about to irreversibly forget. And we're going to pay the ultimate price for this, because if you have a big, strong house with a weak foundation, it doesn't matter if it looks nice on the outside, the next flood will sweep it away. And that is exactly what will happen to most Americans in the coming crisis. So here we are, human beings in the 21st century, several lifetimes and a world away from our grandparents and their ways. Have we become better at living? I think not. I watch as we have become ever more expectant that the world owes us a living. Consumerism has reached epic proportions and people feel aggrieved if they don't own the latest gadget. The truth is, we never have been more disconnected from life, from the world, from the soil, from the trees, and from our own souls. We're straying away from our roots on a dangerous road from which there will be no turning back. And the good and the bad news is that we're the last generation that can truly do something about it. We no longer know how to live without refrigerators, without cars, without phones, without supermarkets. I don't want to see our forefathers' knowledge disappear into the darkness of time. And if you care about your family and what America stands for, then neither should you. This is the third and most important lesson of all. It's always up to you. Now, I believe in God and in the power of free will. And I believe that you are the only one in charge of your destiny and that you're constantly making decisions that shape the rest of your life. Now, it's true we all had different starts, depending on our families and upbringing, but for most of us here in the United States, we at least had decent beginnings. We had water and food, we could go shopping from time to time, and we had decent medical system compared to other countries. We should be more thankful for that. And we should ensure that we have something put aside for darker times. If anything goes wrong with this country, don't blame the government or the president. They don't truly care about you or your family. You'll be the only one in charge of your fate. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, but nothing falls from the sky. God helps you, but He doesn't lay it on your table. You have to work hard and do things yourself. As long as you're aware of this, your destiny rests solely on you and your willpower. Now, you can truly change things, and you can do a lot more than you think you can. With this idea in mind, five years ago, I wanted to do something that hadn't been done before. 
something that not only would help me survive a crisis without investing a fortune in stockpiles, but something that I could do around my house on a daily basis using only methods that were tested and proven by our forefathers for centuries. I wanted to unearth and learn the forgotten ways of our great-grandparents. I went to my grandfather to find out how he survived and to learn the little secrets that helped him stay alive in spite of almost everyone else dying. Now, he was almost 90 years old, but the old man was still in good shape. For three weeks on end, I absorbed his lessons like a dry sponge. And on top of that, we built a lot of things together, including a root cellar and a storm shelter, just like the folks did when he was young. We made lard and ham, and we smoked four turkeys and preserved them for winter in four different traditional ways, and a lot, lot more. Now, when I was a child, I was raised by my grandparents, but I hadn't spent much quality time with them until then. In fact, there were months when we barely even spoke, not because we couldn't stand each other, but only because I was always too busy working or taking care of my kids. A lame excuse and a thing that I deeply regretted later on in life. Well, my grandfather passed on a couple of years ago, and with him, a magnificent amount of survival knowledge. I don't know if you're in a similar situation, but think about your grandfather and how many things he did or knew, things that will vanish forever into the dark abyss of ignorance. And because I deeply believed in lesson number three, that I was the only one who could change something, my goal for the last couple of years changed from not just learning, but saving our forefathers' ways. This is one of the most important things I've done in my life, and I'm proud of it, but it took me five difficult years. Now, first, there's no person that knows all our forefathers' forgotten secrets. Let's just say there are still a handful of people that still practice a lost skill transmitted from generation to generation, even today. But not all the skills, of course. I had to get in touch with a lot of people. Second, where do you find these guys? They are no mainstream survival experts, they don't have a website or a TV show, and some of them even live in remote areas with no internet or TV cable, earning a living like the pioneers did. Third, I wanted to do something unprecedented. You know, articles like 11 skills your great-grandparents had that you didn't, and they started listing the skills, hunting, fishing, foraging, butchering, and so on. Well, you know, this kind of information will never help anyone. I needed something solid, exact, and to the point. Not just skills, I wanted to know things that they actually built, ate, and stored, and exactly how they did it. And fourth, I'm not sitting on a gold mine. As much as I enjoyed traveling and learning these skills, I still needed to go to work. But what I didn't realize when I started my quest is that you can't save these skills only by writing them down. If all these writings will be forgotten in a dusty drawer right next to my bed, it won't help anyone. This knowledge will die together with me, and all my efforts to save our forefathers' ways would have been in vain. So this is because all my life I blindly believed in lesson three, that it's always up to me. But I was wrong. In this case, it's only halfway there. It's also up to you. Today is your chance to be a part of saving our ancestors' lost ways. I wanted to make this information available to every family out there without having to spend years of their lives or thousands of dollars. So I came up with this great idea to edit all my manuscripts and turn all this lost knowledge into one of the greatest books of this century. The Lost Ways, Saving Our Forefathers' Skills. Now, as you can see, I designed and edited the book in an old-fashioned way, but most of it is not written by me personally, because I didn't want people to read a second account. I'm sure a lot of information would have been lost in this process. You know, those little secrets that make a thing really work? Well, those little things make a big difference. So I paid these experts for their time, and I got what I wanted. These people are not professional writers, but instead are uniquely special. They're neither the strong, badass type that you see in Rambo movies, nor the ultra-rich preppers from reality shows. They're simple people who know a lost skill very well. They're smart, shrewd, and wise enough to survive for months or even years in the world's most remote places. 
But we'll get back to that in a little bit. Now as I promised in the beginning of this video, I'll show you how to make a superfood that not only will outlast you, but will provide all the nutrients you need to survive for unlimited amounts of time. In the video, you'll meet Alan, who's just one of the people who followed the program in The Lost Ways. Without being asked to do so, he was kind enough to send back a video tutorial. The food's called pemmican, and it was widely in use by the natives of North America and also by the Western explorers who would go for months without contact with civilization. In the 19th century, even British soldiers had an iron ration of four ounces of pemmican. Many of these iron rations were found intact and edible as much as 50 years later. So let's just avert our gaze from modern survival thinking for a minute and let's think about how the guys who explored the West 150 years ago did it. Now that's exactly the kind of stuff I found in this 350 page book called The Lost Ways. It's probably the only survival book I've actually enjoyed reading and you won't believe the survival things we've lost to history. Now I found the pemmican recipe on page 48 and I decided to give it a go. Natives used whatever was available to them at the time. Bison, elk, moose, deer, but nowadays people just use what they can buy. You just need to remember to select a low-fat red meat and beef is perfect for this. So you'll need six pounds of beef, two pounds of rendered beef tallow, and a third of a cup of strawberries or blueberries. And that's it. Don't include nuts, seeds, vegetable oils, grains, beans, or dairy products of any kind. Now the first step is to dry the meat and blueberries. First you need to slice the meat very thin. If you don't have a dehydrator, you can set the oven to the lowest possible temperature, around 130 degrees, and put the strips of meat directly on the rack. So now place a tin foil on the right side of the rack and spread the blueberries out to dry with the meat. Place the rack back inside. Crack the oven door to prevent moisture buildup. Let this dry for about 15 hours or until it's crispy. 150 years ago, people dried their meat by building a wooden pyramid over a small fire and hanging the meat slices on that. After 15 hours, this is what you should get. Toss it in the food processor until it becomes a powder. Do the same with the blueberries. In the old days, they grind it with a rock to crush it into a powder. For our next step, we need to cut the fat into small pieces about a half inch square. After about 10 minutes, you'll see a pool of fat forming on the bottom of the pot, which should be merrily boiling away. Uh, you can rest a little bit now and stir it maybe only every five minutes, just to keep things well mixed. After about an hour, the major boiling action will have stopped and there'll just be small bubbles rising from the fat. About 90% of the cracklings will be a chestnut brown in color. So use a strainer to separate these and set them aside with salt to enjoy as snacks later. They're really, really good. And if you don't like them or don't want to eat them, you can set them aside to cool for dog treats. We now have to weigh the amount of ground meat and the amount of rendered animal fat. We have to have the same quantities, so you'll probably have to remove some of the excess fat. Place the remaining fat on the stove. Keep it about 120 degrees. Mix the shredded meat into the melted fat and stir it until it's well blended. Then add the blueberries and mix it again. This is how it should look. The fat should be absorbed or coating the meat fibers. There should be very little or no liquid fat pooling in the bottom of the pot. Now, following the instructions from the Lost Ways, you can store it in Ziploc plastic bags and press flat 
removing as much air as possible, and therefore preventing the fat from going rancid. This should keep the pemmican from spoiling for a few years without refrigeration. So let's do that. And here's what I got. Pemmican is the ultimate survival food, no matter if you want to bug out or bug in. 10 pounds of pemmican would supply food for two full weeks of camping activities at three quarters of a pound per day, providing 2,200 calories. In survival mode, the same 10 pounds of pemmican would supply energy for almost a full month. This was just one awesome chapter in the Lost Ways, but you won't believe the survival skills we've lost to history. And Alan is right. This is just one small chapter. Want to discover more? Here's a glimpse of what you'll find in the Lost Ways. From Ruff Simmons, an Old West history expert and former deputy, you'll learn the techniques and methods used by the wise sheriffs from the frontiers to defend an entire village, despite being outnumbered and outgunned by gangs of robbers and bandits, and how you can use their wisdom to defend your home against looters when you'll be surrounded. Native American Eric Bainbridge, who took part in the reconstruction of the native village of Kualoklo in California, will show you how Native Americans build the subterranean roundhouse, an underground house that today will serve you as a storm shelter, a perfectly camouflaged hideout, or a bunker. It can easily shelter three to four families, so how will you feel if, when all hell breaks loose, you'll be able to call all your loved ones and offer them guidance and shelter? Besides that, the subterranean roundhouse makes an awesome root cellar where you can keep all your food and water reserves year-round. From Shannon Azarez, you'll learn how sailors from the 17th century preserved water in their ships for months on end, even years, and how you can use this method to preserve clean water for your family cost-free. Mike Searson who's a firearm and an Old West history expert, will show you what to do when there is no more ammo to be had, how people who wandered the West managed to hunt eight deer with six bullets, and why their supply of ammo never ran out. Remember the panic buying in the first half of 2013? Well, that was nothing compared to what's going to precede the collapse. From Susan Morrow, an ex-science teacher and chemist, you'll master the art of poultice. She says, if you really explore the ingredients from which our forefathers made poultices, you'll be totally surprised by the similarities with modern medicines. Well, how would you feel in a crisis to be the only one from the group knowledgeable about this lost skill? When there are no more antibiotics, people will run to you to save their ill children's lives. If you liked our video tutorial on how to make pemmican, then you'll love this. I'll show you how to make another superfood that our troops were using in the Revolutionary War, which even George Washington ate on several occasions. This food never goes bad, and I'm not talking about honey or vinegar. I'm talking about real food, and the awesome part is that you can make this food in just 10 minutes, and I'm pretty sure that you already have the ingredients in your house right now. Now really, this is all just a peek. The Lost Ways is a far-reaching book with chapters ranging from simple things like making tasty bark bread, like people did when there was no food, to building a traditional backyard smokehouse, and many, many, many more. And here's what Alex Deacon, the owner of Survivopedia.com and MyFamilySurvivalPlan.com wrote on his website. A few days ago, I bought The Lost Ways by Claude Davis a 350-page book that I've just finished reading today, and I can tell you that I enjoyed every page of it. It's funny how after 15 years of prepping, you still learn new things. Of course, the ideas were new to me and probably for most of us, but these things are actually very old. But Claude Davis got it right. The SHTF we all prep for is what folks 150 years ago called daily life. And believe it or not, this is not all. If you get The Lost Ways right now, you'll also receive three exclusive reports that will be off the table soon. There's an old saying that our great-grandparents used to know. Once in life, you need a doctor, a lawyer, a policeman, and a preacher. But every day, three times a day, you need a farmer. So the first report you'll get is what every survivalist should grow in his backyard. 
This special report contains the most nutritious and toughest plants that you should start growing so you'll never run out of food. These plants are reliable in the worst possible conditions, including drought, flooding, or light deprivation. And you'll also find instructions on how to plant, grow, harvest, and store them. I'm also pretty sure that you're familiar with this 150-year-old saying that it's not the strongest species that survived nor the most intelligent, but the ones most responsive to change. So the second bonus you'll get is how to outlive an EMP, the Early Pioneer Way, which is a day-by-day -day guide that shows you what to do after an EMP every day for 30 days using the Lost Ways. Think about it this way. If an EMP had struck in the late 1800s, nobody would have noticed it. Our great-grandparents didn't even know what an EMP was, nor did they know what modern technology was. But they surely lived, survived, and prospered without it. Now things are a little bit different, and because this event can happen all of a sudden with no warning whatsoever, it might be difficult for even the smartest minds to know what to do from the moment the running water stops and your food spoils to the moment when looters come knocking at your door. So, in this report, you'll learn the 10 things that you should do on day one, what you should make on day two, what you definitely need to turn to on day three, and so on until day 30, when you'll be absolutely 100% self-sufficient, protected, and able to help others if you want to. Unless you're living in a bunker full of stockpiles, doing these things in the wrong order may literally mean death. Now I'll show you what to do every day so you'll never run out of water, food, or heat, and then what to do or build to improve things day by day. Another old saying people used to say is, for every minute you spend organizing, an hour is earned. So the third report you'll get is a step-by-step -step guide to building your own can rotation system that can hold at least 700 cans of different sizes. You'll never have to look at 50 cans for expiration dates, and you'll never need to throw away cans again because they've spoiled. A can rotator is not only a time saver but also a money saver. As you can see in this video, the mechanism is very simple. Whenever you buy new cans, you insert them in the upper shelf. The cans will automatically roll down, and they'll be the last in the row. When you pick them up, you do so from the shelf below. So you'll always pick the can that you bought first and therefore with the closest expiration date. Cool and efficient. The one you've just seen in the video, I built with only $95. Pretty cheap if you think that a similar rotator costs $420 on Amazon and holds only 450 cans. And theirs aren't even that cool. Now, once you have the plans and the step-by-step -step guide with pictures, all it takes is just one day of work, even less. So, if you choose to save the lost ways now, you'll also get these three exclusive bonuses that are worth $29 each for free and unlimited access to the members area where you can ask me anything at any time. I'll be there to answer your questions and to help you if you need any clarification on anything. By knowing the ways of our forefathers, believe it or not, you're covered for anything. You'll never have to spend money on any prepping material again. And forget about unreliable and expensive modern survival equipment. Why even bother with reinventing a wheel when these things have been working right for centuries? The Lost Ways prepares you to deal with worst-case scenarios with the minimum amount of resources, just like our forefathers lived their lives totally independent from electricity, cars, or modern technology whatsoever, which means you'll also be bulletproof against the ever-increasing threat of an electromagnetic pulse, a powerful economic breakdown, famines, and natural disasters. You'll have the power to protect and save your family, even to rebuild your community during the worst of times. And besides that, The Lost Ways is not merely a survival book because most of the knowledge you'll find in it will begin improving things in your life starting today. And what I'm talking about is the type of self-sufficiency that our great-grandfathers used to have. I'm talking about things that they did around their homes and the healthy lives that they lived. And at the same time, you get to take part in doing something great, 
Saving Our Forefathers' Lost Skills Now, I consider that I've done my part, the hardest and costliest part, if I may say so. All you need to do is to make sure that you hand this knowledge over when it's time to, and take full advantage of it until then. Now, I've shown it to some expert preppers and readers of mine, and some of them said that they would easily pay $1,000 just to learn these skills. I even thought of creating a weekend workshop and charging at least $500 for a seat. You know, there are a lot of people that do that. But I realized that this would be wrong because only a handful of people will actually learn the lost ways. And while my main focus is not to get rich, but to save these skills by spreading this knowledge to other people just like me. Now, remember when a man's word was his bond? When you made an agreement and you just shook on it? Well, frankly, I'd like to do things the old-fashioned way here, on a handshake. So today, you can just shake my hand and seal the deal for a price that anyone can afford. While this video is still up, you can get The Lost Ways plus the three bonuses for a one-time special offer of just $37. But the only way to get it is to click the Add to Cart button below now. The way I see it, you have three options here. You can hope that things will get better and that a crisis will never strike America. And I'm hoping the same thing, by the way. You know, but my grandfather taught me better. He taught me, as I've told you, to never take anything for granted. Doesn't it seem better to have these skills and never need to use them than to not have them and one day really need one of them? You can also start spending money and valuable time searching for guys who still know a lost thing or two by going through months of research and lots of traveling. And although it might sound nice in the beginning, these expeditions will take a huge toll on your bank accounts. I've spent five years gathering and rounding up this lost knowledge, and I must say that there were lots of times when I just wanted to give up. Or you could save the lost ways without going through any of this. I've already done the hard part. This lost knowledge has already been packed and is readily available to serve you and your children from now till the end of time and there's nothing like this anywhere else. So if you want to literally save the lost ways and to know that your family is secure, to have warmth, food, water, and all the other things they need, even in the worst possible times, this is the only place where you can get it, and you are the only one that could really do something about it. When there's no more electricity and when your neighbors are forced to cook all the meat that they have in their fridges, you'll know the secrets to store it so your family won't starve next week. Heck, in fact, even now, yes, right now, if you get The Lost Ways, go to page 39 and start making one of the super nutritious foods that can last a few years without refrigeration. And when others start begging you for a glass of fresh water, you'll be the only one in your neighborhood able to spare one. Or even a glass of beer or ginger beer, just like our forefathers made when the drinking water was contaminated. Go to page 301 and start building your own old-style backyard smokehouse to preserve your own meat, sausages, and fish using your own spices. And when the dollar becomes useless and all hell breaks loose, you won't care because you won't need any money at all. All you'll need to survive is the lost ways. Nothing more. If our ancestors survived the hardest times using only this knowledge, then so will you. Everyone will turn to you for guidance. Everyone will try to barter with you. Everyone will want to use your tools and your knowledge. This is the amazing power our great-grandparents had. And it's all captured, jam-packed, readily available for you in the lost ways. You won't find this anywhere else, and there's no way to tell how much longer this presentation is going to be up. So click the Add to Cart button below to secure your copy now. In keeping with the spirit of those simpler days, today you can take advantage of my handshake guarantee. Because I always put my money where my mouth is, I'm willing to take all the risk on this one. So click the button below and go through the lost ways. And when you're done, you have to be 100% thrilled and happy with this deal. If for any reason at all, you want your money back, You'll get it within 24 hours from the moment you send me the request. You don't even have to answer any questions. 
Just simply send me a quick email located in the members area in the next 60 days and ask for a refund. That's right, you've got two months to test drive the Lost Ways and the bonuses. That's my handshake guarantee. So is it a deal? I hope so. Don't let this knowledge disappear into the darkness of time. Because in the next crisis, when death will stare you in the eye, this is the only time-tested life vest that you and your family can hang on to. You'll stay calm and protected when others will scavenge through the garbage for food. My guess is that you haven't experienced a long-time hunger. But you are probably familiar with the feeling of skipping a couple of meals. Not a very pleasant experience. We're not used to thinking about what to eat or how to procure food for our children. Again, don't take anything for granted just because we're living in good times now. Our grandfathers and great-grandfathers were the last generation to practice the basic things that we call survival skills today. Why try to reinvent what they did and did very well for centuries? There are only a few moments in life when you can really do something big, and this is one of them. Our grandparents didn't pass these skills on to us in our bloodstream, and neither will you to your children or your nephews. So take advantage of this video while it's still up and save the lost ways by clicking on the button below. You are the only one that can change something. Are you ready to turn back the clocks to the 1800s for up to three years? Because this is what will happen after the next SHTF event. One of my readers, James, replied to this question. Thanks for the book, Claude. I've been looking for something like this for years. And yes, I do believe that some of us are ready to turn back the clock now. Thanks to you, I can truly say that I'm at least one step closer. I can't believe how many things we've lost along the way. This book was an eye-opener for me, and I must admit that there were a lot of things that I was doing or thinking in a totally wrongful way. The brilliance of your book is that it offers a proven way to achieve self-sufficiency without investing any money. Heads up for this book, this is by far the best survival advice I've read so far. And I just can't stop building stuff. James. I received this email and it made my day. Now again, here's my handshake deal to you. You'll get The Lost Ways, plus what every survivalist should grow in his backyard, how to outlive an EMP the early pioneer way, and a step-by-step -step guide to building your own can rotation system. While you'll also take advantage of my full handshake money-back guarantee for 60 days and unlimited email access, where you'll get to ask me whatever you want. Not for $124, but for only $37. This deal just simply can't get any better than this. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope that we'll meet on my secure encrypted checkout page. Now, once you've entered your info and submitted that, you'll have immediate access to The Lost Ways and the bonuses. Click on the button below to secure your spot while this presentation is still up.